pleasure also to be part of this synthetic biology national network that aims really to advance this field. And um, I will be telling this 15 minutes about uh, this quantum institution that when we come from all so basically this uh, electronics and bioelectronics or solutions, let's say, that would be dealing with uh, monitoring of, <clears throat> of environmental processes is one interesting aspect and the energy solutions and, and material solutions that and how we can then combine things. So that, that was basically introduced. So then this uh, background picture here is that we are at one end trying to really also bridge uh, synthetic uh, processes in, in like in bio biology to, 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 to biomonitoring so that we can open up, let's say, a more better atmospheric monitoring, but also ground monitoring and then link these into biotechnology. So the institution is, as was introduced, very new one. So it's one of the focus institutions in, in all university and one of the uh, aims, you know, given that we are in the north, so it's, it's this Arctic dimension that I shortly mentioned. So we have uh, internationally selected PIs that are running projects. I mean, this might be too small to see, but we have, we deal with quite a number. It's really multidisciplinary institution that we are targeting uh, a variety of as aspects, actually from uh, everything from sun into atoms almost. So it's, it's, it, it kind of maybe illustrates the complexity. Uh, but it's also fascinating that we bring together people with different expertise. So we're doing, we're doing work with concrete and, and, and we are also doing uh, sort of a, a process uh, development on, on steel and, 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 and sort, of a, uh, sort of mining industries and, and also uh, measurement technologies, including also nature and natural species, species diversity and Arctic. So it illustrates this interest in, in, in the sense that we have lots of scientific expertise from different point of view and it's, it's kind of a melting pot in a sense to uh, hopefully bring us uh, better solutions by, by having this kind of a quite unique setup in, in Finland and maybe globally also. So this is just illustrating one very essential element and timely as we speak now because Russia is, is actually running this uh, uh, Arctic sort of a setting in a way that we have, first of all, a u unique uh, construction in the northern part, which is the University of Arctic that actually brings together 260 universities in the area, and it's really unique in that sense in the northern part. So we're trying to work together, and now with this digital era, we can also take use of the skills also in these settings. And Oulu University is one of the drivers, and Jeff Welkery now, institution is actually running this. So if you want to look more the details, you can, you can Google this setup and it's, it's something that is, is, is dealing with this uh, prospects of the future. We have lots of <laughs> expecting oil under this glacier, for instance, and uh, if that's melt, so what, what will happen in those uh, kind of premises that we have, and I mean, in the context of, of, of the future of the, of the air currents and water currents and, and all that stuff. So that's an one important massive question that we have to deal with uh, all collectively. So just a few examples of the projects that are being run in the institution. So one deals with, the, I mean, deal, dealing with this uh, global warming. So this permafrost is changing and, and Dr. Yurt is actually targeting this. So this is bringing us new types of risks based on the land use, but also also it's, it's, it's a opening of the certain micro, microbes altogether and how to deal with those and also use them uh, wisely in biotechnical solutions. So this is a, a project that, that um, Dr. Yurt is, is running. So then an, as an example also we have uh, on the Arctic sort of dimensions where we need obviously lots of energy as the future prospect is that we're going to get more mobility even into the north based on the global warming process. So we are preparing also in a way that we develop kind of technical solutions for grabbing more effectively uh, energy from the sun. And, and this is a program that Tapia Fabrizius is actually driving and, and aiming to develop like mobile and more sort of a sophisticated ways to further enhance this accumulation of the energies from the sun. So that's one of our PIs, just as an example. So then we have Marco Huttura that's driving uh, a program that deals with the steel and, and also the uh, energy and nano, nano kind of a setups where, where they use uh, new types of ways to, to uh, enhance and, uh, the, the accumulation of energies from the sun, even to the nano level. And they also use this biomimicry uh, capability that you are then 
copying uh, solutions from nature, like the leaves of the tr tree or the, the sort of leaves, and they, they're bio bio copying and then translating those into into biotech solutions. And they've made nice solutions from uh, butterfly wings, as an example, and, and created new types of more effective ways to capture energy uh, based on this sort of uh, surfaces that are coming from these bio-inspired solutions from nature. So then, uh, so we have. Uh, then Mirja Illikainen that works on, together with her team, uh, being the dean of the technical faculty, so she actually has developed now a protocol in their team that instead of producing carbon dioxide, you can really actually uh, reverse the pro process of, of, of making neutral cement and concrete, and this is now binding uh, uh, and accumulating uh, carbon from there. And actually steel industry and, and concrete industry are the biggest producers of, of carbon emissions, so therefore it's very <coughs> significant. And then, uh, again, a uh, final example, Marco Huttula's program, where basically they have now developed a process uh, of, of steel making, so that also similarly kind of accumulates uh, carbon, and then also uh, this whole question about how to use this uh, uh, energy uh, from, from the H2 kind of processes that are shown in this slide. So these are just a few snapshots of the PIs, and if you want to take a closer look over the activities of this round ball that I saw at first. So then a few words about uh, sort of the biotech window. So we are also connected to this flagship, which is the gene cell nano, and then there's the sort of a bio aspect there. So we're developing uh, new types of vectors uh, for medical solutions, but also we take inspiration from nature, as I show a little bit later. So we are also dealing with cell therapies, and therefore these talks earlier has been quite inspiring, and also these nanotech solutions that are coming from synthetic uh, capabilities altogether. So the next slide shows then uh, a new sort of a setup that we've <laughs> discovered, let's say, collectively in, in science that, that nature actually uses in, in this social communication, uh, so-called small vesicles that will be a cylinder shortly talk yesterday in another session, and basically this means that the microbiome, including uh, plants and trees, are actually communicating by so-called pico, nano, and micro uh, vesicles that are secreted by the cells, and these are ending uh, to go around different species, and it's a, it's a new dimension that we can take use of, 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 of quite a variety of technologies. So this is illustrating what these are, so the cells really are pushing, it's like life is like a jiggling machine in a way that we are really uh, secreting from all our body, but also all bodies, live organisms, including viruses, uh, are using this system. And this is like a ma postal mail system that the cells are transmitting information into the body fluids, uh, and then you can uh, use these as vehicles to, to drive uh, drugs into specific places. You can also uh, you know, use this coding eventually when it's solved to, to, to image this use and also monitor processes in nature with new technologies that are coming from the microfluidics. So as an example of the interest, so Roche as a, as a company that so have invested to milk nano and pico vesicles basically that are uh, shown here with some favorite <laughs> value product that we drink and, and then how these are containing uh, these pro um, kind of mammalian products, uh, these vesicles also that can cross the gut barrier and enter all over the place. So this is also a new modality for developing solutions that are integrating uh, synthetic biology and also medical practices. So not only milk, but any other source that you guys eat, and we eat, including the you know citrus and and and, and all these uh, nice food sort of subjects that we eat. So these contain all these vesicles that can be then uh, harnessed from these sources, and then can also impacts eventually the, the the farming practices, and we can also get new types of solutions. We heard yesterday nice, nice uh, cultures that you have these gallus cultures that are offering then opportunities to uh, also develop. And then based on the fact that these are biocompatible because we eat these uh, contents from these sources, so they are having a natural physiological process and therefore it should be uh, possible to really apply them 
uh, as new ATMPs, which are new kind of carriers of positive uh, influences to our body, and, and they also explain much of the <laughs> health effects that have been found in different cultures. So this is just illustrating some of the processes that we are developing. So we take berries and, and, and what have you there, and then basically we, are, uh, we have developed protocols that are then offering us to extract in a small and larger quantities of these vesicles from the natural sources. We can label those and also engineer those products that, that either by using kind of genetic tricks or biochemical tricks, and then we can then also decode the origin of these uh, kind of vesicles that would then go to a target. And you can also nowadays label them by genetic means, which means that we can also then study their targets by using model organisms. And this is an example of the, some of the values that is emerging. So this is a, just an example of the, of the spruce vesicles that you see on the, on the box on the left corner, or let's say cloudberry vesicles. And if you apply these to cancer cells, so they are having very effective capability to silence uh, and impact the growth of these uh, kidney cancer cells, as an example. So this is illustrating some of the principles that we have. And also, everybody I know familiar with COVID and SARS virus, basically, that goes to your lungs and you know, goes inside the body and impacts your AC, AC receptor expressing cells. So here we have also examples where these vesicles are taken in by the cells uh, altogether, including the lungs, and then they go through a process called transcytosis. So then we can use this information creatively to develop new types of solutions from nature. And actually we have, maybe you've heard about this COVID-19 dog, so we can also train strawberry dogs or um, you know, <laughs> berry dogs that would recognize these qualities that come from the food as an example uh, to enlarge, let's say, these opportunities to develop new types of carriers that come from nature in terms of carrying drugs and other types of uh, non, not only small molecules but biologicals altogether. So that's a very promising field in that sense. And then we combine also uh, new types, not only dogs but others, to help us to really identify these critical uh, players from millions of these vesicles that are floating in our body. They also come into the surface of the skin and as I started uh, my talks so are basically we can then do features to the atmospheric studies. And this is now something that illustrates my, my final slide. These sort of uh, settings where we are that we can develop now new sensors based on these representations on these nanostructures, you know, sort of even in, in, in a non-invasive way in another session there was discussion about these remote clinical trials. So we can also develop these types of sensors that are reading large quantities of, quantities of these disease indications, but also that this, I mean, that's based on perspiration, the rest of sweating in this hot day, but then uh, also this transpiration that the trees are using. So similarly, they have their blood, which is kind of this um, fluid that is kind of driving this photosynthesis, as we heard, but also that they're transpirating in a reverse way, these vesicles into the atmosphere, and this is obviously very exciting. So I hope that you got some now view about the quantum institution, our PIs, how they sort of target different big areas of, of, of global um, need for carbon cycling and, uh, and capturing of that, and also this Arctic dimension, the, how we need to um, solve that in a, in a, together in a way. So it's a massive meta question of science and how we have to be facing these scenarios for the future if we cannot stop global warming and, and all these major sort of technological processes that we have in societies, including steel and factories, so that we can, okay. sorry, that was <laughs> my clock. So basically, then, then also these medical needs uh, that come from natural sources and also better understanding of our interplay between nature and us, which is opening up based on this nanobiological stuff. And finally, that how we can use bioelectronics to eventually combine these gadgets to uh, more broadly use, use the nanotechnological solutions to then read the functionalities in nature. So thank you.